Hello, gorgeous humans. How are you guys doing today? I'm coming to you live. I am Alina Grayson. Of course, you know if you are in here because day three is in the high performance coaching community. So when you're hopping on, say hello. And if this is your first time watching me, and this is your first time in the group, welcome. I'm excited to get to know you. And then if you're watching this on replay, hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited. We are ready for day three. Uh, let's see who we have live here. We have Mariana. Hello, gorgeous and lovely. Hello, Angela. Hello, Skyla. Hello, beautiful. So happy to see your beautiful faces. So for everybody who is caught up, and it's okay if you're not, today's conversation is, is really geared to the entrepreneur, the online businesses, those of you who really wish to understand how to really sell during these times right now, because the economy is a little bit different. So we're really going to talk about what's working for selling. And this is really about social media. But if you don't have a business and you're interested, or you feel like somebody really needs to listen to this conversation, have a listen, tag, share. We are going to put this up on YouTube as well. So you'll have a chance to watch this on there. Hello, Lenny. Hello, Angela. Thank you for tagging. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure. Um, can everybody see this too? For some reason, I'm always putting it on public and then it still sometimes says only friends can see. I just want to double check edit privacy. Okay, we're good. So we're good. All right. Okay. So we're going to get started today, guys. And just let me know for those of you who are caught up, what was your biggest aha so far from the last three days? Um, if you haven't watched yesterday, I announced there is going to be a day four. We are going to be doing day four on Tuesday. I will put in the events section. Um, if anything changes, you'll see it there. I'll probably send out an email with all the replays as well, but we're doing a day four. So this is what you're going to need for day four because it is going to be very unconventional. So uh, you're going to need your birth date, which I'm sure you already know, um, but you're going to need to know where you were born. So the location and then the time the time that you were born on. We're going to talk about astrology and human design, and it's going to be amazing, exciting. Now, if you're one of those people who are like, I don't know what time I was born on, born at, you know, you can call the hospital, but either way, honestly, um, there are a couple of people that I know that don't know, and there's no way to figure it out, but just listening to these conversations, it's going to hit you like, this is me, this is me, this is me. And even if something doesn't resonate with you, I just believe that social modalities, they just really help us. But even if something doesn't resonate for you, even if you don't want to listen to this about you, I swear to God, it will help you understand people on a next level. I have used this with my children and my family and friends and some of my clients that are open to this kind of work. And it is kind of mind boggling. Uh, yes, HD and astrology. Yes. So your birth date, the location you were born in, and then the time. And again, if you don't know, come and listen because you will understand people at our next level. Like if you can check your kids, oh my gosh, it's going to be so, so amazing. And then we're really going to understand each other. And then you're going to really understand why sometimes school didn't work for certain one, for certain types and certain personalities. But we're going to talk about that on Tuesday. I'll put that in the event section. So I just want to let you guys know we're still doing the tuition draw and I am feeling so generous. We, I'm going to pick nine people, nine people who are going to have a chance to win 50% off. What I think we're going to do is either do it on Monday or Tuesday. I think probably Tuesday. We'll do it Tuesday right before I do day four. Um, again, I'll put in the events section. I have to look at my schedule because I have a few couple calls and a podcast that I kind of just put in there now. So I have to figure that out. But nine people will have a chance to win 50% off. And you can use that towards Inner Circle, my one-year membership, and get it completely off, which means that you're going to be in my containers for a full year having conversations like this. Um, so yeah, so all of that will be in the events section. I will tag you all and it'll be amazing. You're a four, six. Oh, that's so amazing. Leo, Aries, Moon, amazing. So I am a six, two, Manny, Jen, Capricorn, and a Gemini moon. That's mine. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. And if you don't know anything about this, just come and listen. I always say in all my coaching programs and everything that I talk about, you know, like just listen and see if anything makes you feel lit up. And if it activates you, and then always I say, like, take what you want from me, apply it, and then leave the rest. If you don't like something that I say, go find your truth. But I am very unconventional, so I'm really excited for that. So if you're already into HD, let's just have a conversation. It'll be amazing. But again, so nine people will get chosen. So you guys can share throughout the weekend. Every time you share, 60 projector. Yeah, Kristen, what's up, girl? <laughs> um, so 
Okay, yeah, so nine people get the chance to win 50% off, right? And so the social media program is launching, Coach Academy is launching, the, the, pro, the astrology program is going to launch. So all the things that are coming, and then you get to use that towards anything that you want and a bundle as well. So let's get started, okay? I hope you guys have had so much fun. I'm so happy that you're here. So yesterday we had talked about being magnetic to more money, to more opportunities, to even having amazing relationships, to being that kind of person that walks into rooms and is in certain containers. And you are just like interesting because you know stuff and you have skills, right? We talked about what money is. It's a currency that us humans have decided to exchange for things of value that, you know, you, you want, you want something that I have, I want something you have, we exchange money for that. That's the energetic exchange, right? Um, hello, Michelle. Hello, my daughter is so into astrology signs. A lot of it holds true. It does all four of my kids. And I have a boy and he is a cool boy. Okay. He's like a leader vibe and, um, he's a manifester three, five. And I have constantly given him so much wisdom and he's a Taurus too, and I'm a Capricorn. So it's just so much synergy. It's so wild, right? So I've, I've like given him readings and every time he, he's stuck on something and there's an issue, I bring the astrology in plus all my coaching stuff. And he's like, oh my God, my life makes sense. This is easier. So the way that I have found this stuff really works is because I've applied it to myself and I've been doing it with my kids and then with Adam as well. And Adam's a projector for six um, and Sherry. So Sherry um, was one of my private clients. And I always laugh because she's born on the exact same date as Myrea, and she's also a 1-3 pure generator. So it's so cool. Um, but again, nothing is set in stone. And because we're unconventional, you just get to take what you like and leave the rest. Not everything has always resonated with me in astrology. This is why I really believe in just, you know, taking the things you like, go and trial and error. And if you don't like something, leave it, you know? It's, you know, they say that this is the foundation, but really... You can change the foundation of house anytime you want, if you want to be unconventional. At the end of the day, what I really believe is just modalities help us to understand each other more and ourselves more. But at the end of the day, really, what I truly believe is you just get in life what you believe in. If you believe that money just comes to you and you got to initiate or whether you respond, so be it. I really believe that we're the most powerful when we just choose to believe in certain things and so be it. Um, Marianne says, I do that with my kids too. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you're already into it, we'll just have a fun conversation. And if you're new, this will be just a really big intro. We'll talk about the energy types. We'll talk a little bit about like the personality profiles. We won't get too deep in the centers. I do want to bring one thing. I want to talk about the heart center and, and then everything else. Like you'll just, just listen. So if you're really like, what is this? Just lean back and listen. I used to be the most logical person, even though I was very spiritual, but society turned me into like, well, I worked in the corporate world, you know, I got very logical, even though I was always believing in angels and ghosts and all these things. And I liked astrology, but I, I felt like I was weird. So then when I was in the corporate world, I didn't really talk about that stuff. And now that I've come back to my spirituality and I've really been open with it, it's, oh my gosh, it's made me just be more at peace with myself. It's helped me really navigate life because I have a six line too. So there's been always so much trial and error. No wonder I've had so many degrees. No wonder I have been through so much, right? And it, that's where I get my wisdom from. So just come and listen. It'll be amazing. Take what you find useful and helpful. Absolutely. Even in my coaching, right? And what's helpful too is a lot of us do learn from contrast. So if I'm saying something that in your soul, you're like, mm -mm, mm -mm, then that's actually a good thing because you're going to figure out what actually works for you. And that's, what's really important at the end of the day. Again, it's what do you believe? I'm just going to adjust this here. Um, you guys can hear me well. So day four is coming. Everything will be in the events section and I will tag everyone. So you guys don't miss anything. And then we'll send out an email. So let's dive into today's call because I have an exciting thing to talk to you guys about. So if you're an entrepreneur, put your hands up. Let me know if you're watching um, and let me know if you're a business owner and if you do also sell on social media. So again, the energetic currency that we exchange for stuff in the world is money. So as entrepreneurs, obviously we're all the manifestors and we love manifesting money into our life and it can come in all kinds of ways. We're open to receiving that. But where does money come from into our business? Like, where do we find the people or how do the people find us 
who want to buy what we offer, Monica. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, all of the above, all of the above. Yes, hello, gorgeous people. Um, so where does where do people find us, right? Where are the people going to pay us for our offers? Well, social media, right? Once, but what happens once they find us on social media? Like, how do we get people to actually pay us, right? How do we get people to pay us? Well, this is what we're going to talk about today. So yesterday I said that, like, honestly, I really believe that we are, I know it's crazy time that we're living in, but I still believe it's one of the best times to be alive, especially if you are an entrepreneur, especially if you are a creative, an artist or anyone who just wants to make multiple streams of income. Anybody that has a talent and wants to share their gifts with the world, this is the best time to be alive because of social media. We no longer have to wait for an opportunity for someone to give us a mic and put us on stage to be visible. We don't have to have permission for someone to give us visibility. We have these free social media platforms at our fingertips that attach that literally connect us to everybody around the world and we get to be visible in the way that we want without anybody's permission like if you think about even just even before social media even before the internet like there was just the tv and the radio if you are an entrepreneur and you had an idea or you were an artist and you had a talent like you had to find someone that was connected to someone that could get you on TV, that could get you on the radio. You had to get permission to get on stage, right? And now we literally create our own stage. This is what I, I feel like is social media. We create our own stage, we grab the mic and we allow ourselves to be visible as much as we want. Uh, Marianne says a million different strategies, but live video boot camps webinars are the fastest way to go from cold to sold. Yeah, oh, I love that. Gold to sold. <laughs> Rams, right? But you know, it, and you know what's even more greater is that not only do we not need to be connected to someone or ask someone to put us on stage so we can be visible to share our gifts, we also are so lucky because back in the day, if you're an artist and you are an entrepreneur and you really want to get visible, like you couldn't technically be your full self. Like if we think about like certain artists, you know, that we loved growing up before the internet, like they had to tweak themselves, right? There's so many actors and actresses and there's a lot of like singers and you just, everybody always talks about how they had to be a certain way, right? You had to lose weight. You have to talk this way. You got, if you're going to get on my network, these people used to say, or on my radio, you have to be a certain way, right? Like and now we get to be so fully authentic. We get to speak the way we want to speak. We get to share the message that we want to share. And we get to look the way we want to look. And we get to be connected to the world globally just on social media. Like, this is amazing. That's why entre online entrepreneurs are so blessed, too, because we don't even have to have overhead. We have location freedom. We get to go anywhere we want around the world, log in, and be connected to people around the world. And that's incredible. My first business, I had to buy a yellow page ad. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I remember those. That's so funny. Right? So this is an exciting time and it's exciting because we get to be authentic and we get to be who we are. Could you imagine how many artists were like, I don't want to look like that. And I don't want to lose weight. And I don't want to tweak things about myself. I want to be who I am, but they couldn't. And we get to, so let's be grateful. Let's be grateful for social media that it's free. It connects us to all of our aligned hell. Yes. Buyers all over the planet. So let me ask you a question here. Who here has bought something off social media? Whether it's a product, a service, let me know in the comments and hashtag replay. And if you did buy something off social media, can you share with me and everybody in the group, which platforms did you buy from? Did you buy from TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Threads? Uh, what else? YouTube. What else am I missing? Which platforms did you buy off of? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's see. Me, me, tons, tons. Okay, yeah. So let me know which platforms, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, which ones do you tend to buy from? And if you've ever bought anything from IG. Okay. I just wait for you guys. Uh, Facebook, Insta. Oh, yeah, Pinterest. Okay. Uh, Facebook, coaches, mostly Facebook. Okay. Instagram, Instagram, Facebook. Okay, so just so you guys know, the reason I love asking this, Facebook 
is just pay attention to where are people mostly buying? And this is kind of what I want to tailor this training to. For the most part, if I ask anybody this, right? And I ask people all the time, it's Facebook and Instagram, Facebook, Instagram, that bought from Facebook. There you go. So there's the evidence, right? And so these are the two, this is why I focus so much on Facebook and Instagram the most, because that's where I buy from. And as you guys can see, this is where mostly people buy from. A lot of, for TikTok, it's mostly to come and watch videos and be entertained, right? But the thing is, if you nail social media, Instagram and Facebook, they're all transferable to the different platforms. But just pay attention, bought from Facebook, IG, see? So Instagram and Facebook are the big platforms for where people really do tend to buy from, you know, across the board. So this is kind of where I focus my business and this is where I focus most of my marketing and my selling, you know? And so if you already understand Facebook and Instagram, that's perfect. It's just transferable to all the platforms, right? So obviously it is a valuable skill to learn how to sell on social media, even if you're not an entrepreneur. Because if you work for a business and you're in advertising or marketing or sales, uh, public relations, like this is a valuable skills. TikTok leads me to Facebook. Perfect, right? So all the platforms are amazing, but or across the board, Facebook and Instagram is where ten, people tend to buy, right? So social media is so valuable. And, you know, who here, let me know in the comments and hashtag replay, who had a business or started a business in 2020? Who already was online selling stuff in 2020 when the world started getting a little crazy, basically changed a lot, right? When all the brick and mortar businesses were shutting down, closed up because of the lockdowns, who here had a business? So I did too. So I actually started my business in 2019 in the summer and then in 2020 hit, right? So yeah. Okay. So 2020, when things got crazy, who had a business? So I remember when everything started getting really crazy and there was so much fear and obviously, you know, brick and mortar businesses were closing down. People were losing their jobs. And I remember like just being scared because everybody was like, oh my God, like I'm losing jobs. Right. But and, you know, here's another thing. If you had a business, did you get that feeling that it was somehow like very improper to be selling and promoting your business when other people's businesses were closing and you knew people's people were losing their jobs? Let me know in the comments because that was a trend. Yes, yes. Um, Angela, yes. I was already. Maureen, cool, awesome. Uh, Skyla, me. I think I started watching you back in 2020. Oh my God, Rachel, that's so amazing. Oh, I love that. That makes me happy. And I love when I grow with you guys. It makes me so happy. Um, okay, so when I when that hit, obviously I was, because I just started my business in 2019 in the summer. So it was like six months in. I'm like, oh my God, like now what? And I remember a lot of people feeling like it's kind of in poor taste to be selling right now because people are losing their jobs and brick and mortar business are closing down. Kristen said I had a brick and mortar healing center and had to close it during COVID. Ah, oh, listen. So it made certain online entrepreneurs, a lot of people feel like it was improper to sell. A lot of us felt like guilty about it. And then a lot of us actually got a lot of shame. And I remember seeing that, like, you shouldn't be selling. I just lost my job. Like people felt really weird. And I remember like the first couple of days I was like frozen for a moment there. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, like I felt bad too. Right. And there was this whole vibe that you should, it's probably important taste to do that. We went big in 2020. Yeah, I know. So this is my, this is why this I'm bringing this up because this is kind of what's happening in the economy and this is going to really land. Okay. So everybody who had a really big year in 2020 share that. Okay. Because this whole fear is starting up again and it's very contagious when we don't want to share. And I want you to know that actually the people that start selling and leading and investing right now are the people that are going to blow up. So keep an eye on people who share that. And my business was blew up to six figures in 2020 as well, because I was frozen for two days. And then I remembered I'm a freaking leader. <laughs> I have this dream that I value. And I know that if brick and mortar businesses are closing down and every online entrepreneur stops selling, now we're going to be in a bad place. Recession now go big. Absolutely. You know, some of the biggest companies and businesses blow up during recessions. Absolutely. When the, within economies like this, right? So during that time, do I remember though, a lot of entrepreneurs disappeared. A lot of entrepreneurs stopped talking about things, selling less. I'm kind of seeing this vibe now. But the people, those of you like myself who rise and kept launching 
and kept investing in themselves and in their business and they kept selling, we had massive, huge financial growth. In 2020 is when I hit six figures in my coaching business. And I, in those two days was about to be like, I don't think I should do this, but I rised and I sold and I scaled. And this is why the economy, we literally created an economy as online entrepreneurs. So I want to just say the people right now that judge online entrepreneurs for selling during these times. And in general, because I do believe people who work career jobs and have the nine to fives, they don't really understand online entrepreneurs. And sometimes they're like, why are you selling so much? Why are you selling? And why are you selling during an uncertain time when people are losing their jobs and brick and mortar businesses are can't sell? How could you be selling? How shame, like this was the vibe and this is kind of happening right now. But here's the thing is people who have jobs and they've, and they've never been entrepreneurs, they don't understand that selling is our job. The people who have jobs misunderstand online entrepreneurs. And if we actually calculated the amount of time that they go to work for their job to make money and make money for their companies versus the amount of time that we, the amount of hours that we spend selling, like there's a huge difference there. Like 20% of the time that I spend selling, you are spending at work. But there's a misunderstanding and selling is absolutely serving. And it's our freaking job to sell as entrepreneurs, right? Our brains work so differently. Yeah, right? There's just misunderstanding. And so that's why I'm just bringing this up because if you're a new entrepreneur, if you're gonna start a business or you're right now, you're feeling like, ooh, is it in poor taste to be selling when my aunt just lost her business? Or, you know, if things are, the rumors are true of what's gonna happen, like, you know what I mean? People start to get scared and, and then they feel a little bit like, oh, I don't wanna be that person that makes people feel bad. But People who work nine to fives and regular jobs don't understand entrepreneurs. So if you've ever been judged by someone and you and people have told you, or you see people just decide to like tell everybody because they use their you know social media like a diary, hey, like why do you sell so much? Like why are you always launching? You sell too much. If you've ever heard that or seen that, the people that project that it's because they don't understand that that's your job. <laughs> that's your job as an online entrepreneur to sell. Right. And so if ever anybody ever asks you that, you get to politely say, well, that's my job. Kind of like how you go to job and you make money for your company and you make money for yourself. My job is to sell. Right. Plus, it is a service. If you know you sell something impactful and amazing, then it is serving. Absolutely. Right. So first things first, in order for us to make money on social media. So let me know, first of all, in the comments. Who here loves social media? Who here has an amazing relationship with social media? Because the first step to making sales and making money off social media is we got to love the platform. And the thing is, if you are feeling stressed on it or you hate it or you don't like it, I will tell you it's because you are using it like a consumer. Maria, Maria says, uh, hold on a second. Very good point, Patricia. Yes. Hello, gorgeous. Uh, Marianne, if you believe in your product and service and you're doing a disservice, absolutely, absolutely, right? So um, for us to make money and sell and use social media, we have to love it. And if you hate it, and anybody who hates it, it's because they're using it like a consumer. And we're not here to use social media like a consumer. We use it as part of our marketing, our branding, us selling our amazing products and services. So as an online entrepreneur and an online business, don't use social media as a consumer. We use it for marketing, connecting, building relationships, and running our business from it. In order for social media to work for you, though, you have to love social media. Nothing works when you don't love it, and you know that. And that the second point is, is that you must love selling, and that selling is your job. And if you believe that what you're selling is very valuable and it impacts the world and the economy in a positive way, then that is something you should be proud of. But you said, would you say you have to have detach her from emotionally? Not necessarily. Like I like love the connections that I make, right? I am just very intentional, right? So if I'm seeing things that trigger me or, you know, that I know that it's just not my vibe and there's something in like, insincere online like I just unfollow 
I really do. I use my social media so intentionally. Like I connect with the people on my posts. I connect with my clients on there. I build relationships in my DMs and I come as the creator. I'm not a consumer. I'm creating and I'm putting things out. 80% of what I'm doing on social media, I'm putting them out. And 20% is for me to connect with my people, right? So not necessarily, but if you're feeling like things are giving you anxiety, then it's just like, clean it up. There's just, you're connected to something or someone that is not good for your soul. So clean it up, right? So first things first, in order for sales to work, we got to love social media. We got to understand that selling is our job and we love it because what we sell is amazing unless you know that what you sell is not good. In that case, why are you selling it? Because I am not interested in ever teaching people how to market and sell if the thing you're selling is shit and you just want to learn to be a salesperson. That is not what I'm about. Carlita, hello from my personal page. A little late, couldn't connect from my motivation page today. Ah, oh, that's okay. I'm happy you're here, gorgeous, right? So if you feel deep inside selling's bad or you don't like selling, then check in with yourself. Is there a possibility that deep inside, you know that what you sell isn't good? Because we got to be in love with what we're selling and we have to believe that with all our heart that this is something valuable and people need this, right? Like this is really, really important because the energetics before the sale are more important than like the, the money comes from everything you do before the sale. And the energetics are like, I love social media. I care about people and I love selling because I have this incredible thing that I've created. And those energetics are so powerful, right? So I love selling my coaching offers, my programs, because I know what I sell is valuable and impactful. I know what it's done for me. Now that I've seen my clients go through it, I know what I sell is so valuable and impactful. And I probably won't even see it till I die because you know what I mean? Like, but generations will change by my work for the people that actually integrate my work, right? So if we're not able to sell confidently, the number one reason that the sale and the money isn't coming in is because either we don't value ourselves or we don't value the thing that we're selling. We're not proud of the thing that we're selling. And if there's anything like, I'm not good enough, then go back to day two, okay? Because it has to do with either you need a skill. So again, then go get it, go invest, go learn in it. Or if it's like, I don't know something, then again, go get it. But number one reason the energetics don't work before the money comes is because we're not obsessed and we don't think the thing we have is valuable, right? The first sequence to selling is loving and being really proud of what we're offering. So if you know that something is not good with what you're selling, can we innovate? Can we make it better? Can we pivot? Can we go and invest and, you know, upgrade the branding and all that, right? Like these are things we got to really look at. Now, before I go sell, go into selling and building a business model that has repeat buyers and referrals, because that's the kind of selling that I teach. Okay. Let's just touch on one thing that I really profoundly stand for. So let me know in the comments who, who here has had their business for five years now, because something that I stand for in the way that I teach business and entrepreneurs, you know, business clients and all that is brand longevity business longevity. This is what we're looking to do. Rachel says, I love what I am going to be selling. Part of my fear is showing my face. LOI, I was calling for that for sure. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. And you can always come and practice here too. Just be brave. Just remember what your offer has done for you. And so that's something you can do too. If you're not feeling it's valuable, take yourself through your method. Take your, take, use your product, look at it. Like if you're not obsessed with it, how do we make it better so that we know how valuable it is, right? Like I could take myself through my programs, which I do. That's why I do them live. And every single time I do my programs live, I'm like, <gasps> my life changes again. There's a pivot, there's a growth, there's an evolution. And I'm like, this is so valuable. And this is why I had that confidence to be like, my coaching offers are freaking world-class. If you actually invest and learn, you will shift your life. I can stand by that because I've taken myself through my method and now I've watched people take themselves through it. But if you never had a client, take yourself through your process. And so that you can remember why what you sell is so valuable. So those energetics are there when you market and you brand and you sell, right? When you're not confident, it's like, well, what's wrong with it? Because people feel from you what you feel, right? Uh, I am detached from the sales. So no, 
it's not something I take personally. Perfect. Yeah. Entrepreneurs, we got, we got, we got like hard skin, right? So who here has had a business for five years? Because who here has also heard of this business saying that most businesses do not make it past the five-year mark? Who's heard that? Love this. Thanks so much. I'm so happy, Rachel. So who here has heard that? So when I first heard that, that most businesses don't make it past the five-year mark, I was like, why? And now I know why. <laughs> okay, me, Sherry, yes, amazing. Staying power. Hello, beautiful Lindsay. And also, no, it's not aligned for you right now. Yes, absolutely. And maybe means yes. Like, this is what we got to say. Kristen Day, hello. Okay, so when I heard that the first time, I was like, why? And then who here now is on social media? And how many times a day do you get someone trying to be your friend? And immediately they're trying to sell something to you. They're trying to get you to join something. They're cold messaging you. You've never met these people. Or like if you even are interested, they're chasing you around, right? This old paradigm, the old paradigm of selling where we're chasing people and leaning in on them and using cold objections. This is why businesses don't survive for five years. I've heard of it, yes. Because seriously, if we continue to burn through our network, it is, it's the worst. And now people are getting sneaky where they're like, how are you today? I'm so happy I found you. I love your video. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. The next thing is like, are you ready to scale to 50K, blah, blah, blah. And they're sending me like a link. And I'm like, come on, man, <laughs> right? This is why now I prefer that people connect with me in my comments. Let's talk under our comments. Let's just talk on each other's posts because first of all, Busy entrepreneurs who actually have a, a like a busy business, they can't be in the DMs answering messages all the time. Their priority is literally, first of all, their team, their clients, their actual like employees, right? Yeah, blah, 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 exactly. So can we also look at like this old model doesn't work. Old messaging people, pretending to be people's friends. Like who would you walk up to at a party and be like, Hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. Would you like to invest in my thing? I don't even know you. And this is what people are doing. And this strategy is awful. And this is why then entrepreneurs also get the, the feedback of like selling is sleazy and people get annoyed with selling or they've had this experience, right? So let's change things around and really believe that actually, if you just show up with something valuable and you're confident and you actually invest in some marketing and some branding and, and some care that you will be able to attract the ideal people into your world with ever, without ever convincing people. Like, I can't believe people still sell call sales objections and things like that. I've never done that. It's like a robot, 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 robot right? So true, right? We don't need to do that. And this is why like the unconventional me, and I'll, I'm going to talk a little bit more about spirituality in day four, but like, can you trust that like the thing you sell is so amazing? It's impacted your life. The MLM that you're in, the opportunities are amazing. The product that you use is so amazing. You invest in like marketing branding so that, you know, you can actually show that you are taking your business seriously. Like, can you trust if you just share and share your story? You know, we'll talk about different things that like you can just attract people. And can you also trust that everybody you talk to might find you so valuable that they'll share with other people? Because I'm very well aware that not everybody I'm talking to right now might buy from me, but they might be like, I know someone that actually will be able to find value from the thing you're sharing, right? So can we trust in attraction marketing? Can we trust that the universe, God source is going to send us the people if we just go first and we just share our gifts and then we lean back and trust that the people that are meant to buy our stuff are gonna come into our world? Like, come on, like this is possible. I have never once done a sales call. I have never once pulled message someone. I've never once used the sales objection. And even when people say, can I buy? Can you send me a link? I've never been like, did you get the link? Are you going to buy? We don't need to do that. Can you trust that people are smart and powerful when they're ready? They're ready. You know, and I have a riff on faith and trust too, before we talk about astrology on day four, but that's for another day. Hello from Scotland Lee. DMs out of control. Yeah, I know it changes the interface. Yeah. Trust and you shall receive. Yes, Lindsay, you are a unicorn. So are you. I love you. Um, right. Because Here's the other thing too, is every time people do that, and every time if you're doing this, and I'm not trying to call you out, I'm trying to help you because really brand longevity 
is going to come from you actually creating valuable things, building amazing relationships, giving amazing experiences to people, and then trusting that what you deliver is also good and that people will tell people about you and they'll share you and they'll come back as repeat buyers. We want repeat buyers and we want to deliver something amazing so people tell other people about us. This is what will create brand longevity. If you continue to chase people, convince people, or also you might be a good salesperson, but you actually know the thing that you sell is crap. No one is going to share that with anybody. Nobody's going to give you a referral. And the more that you're attacking people in their DMs and chasing people, your reputation will precede you. You will burn through your network and you're going to have to keep restarting and keep restarting. We want brand longevity. This is what I stand for. Okay. So the businesses, if we look at that have really tapped into business longevity are the ones that understand that I create amazing offers. I give, I really value and care about people and their experience before the buying experience, during the buying experience and after. I sell from desire, not from need. Like you need this. I don't chase people. Like, like for instance, this is why I like looking at luxury brands. Luxury brands sell from desire. Like think about Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Lamborghini. Lamborghini has that quote where it's like, we don't even have a commercial because it's like, like it's like our person is not watching tv right like that's such an epic quote right but they're not chasing people they're not convincing people they're creating high quality things they're giving world-class customer experience and they're just using attraction marketing and they're also trusting people are going to share them and tell other people about them like businesses like even like apple i love looking at their business model they are constantly innovating reinventing themselves they are constantly coming up with new upgrades and they don't even have a sales team they just have a genius team they actually are there to serve you if you walk into the store no one is going to be like do you want to buy this if you're an apple owner you know that this is why i've stayed with apple for so long i love it and if i need them i can get a hold of them and they're amazing right uh, exactly. So many people expect immediate success, but a traditional business makes nothing for you. It's typically with a very high overhead, branding ourselves online is an amazing. I'm like, yes, it is. This is again, coming back to point one is that we're so blessed guys, because we don't have to have overhead. Like if you don't have products, you don't have overhead, right? Like, oh, it's amazing. I just found out the 15 is out Friday. Okay. Well, there you go. Right. So, but I love Apple because they don't even have a sales team. You could never walk into an Apple store and they're going to be down your throat selling something. They are literally there to help you. They have the geniuses, right? And the way that they market is like, they're not even selling to a new person. They're just hoping that the people that are with them are going to keep buying from them. This is why they just keep innovating and upgrading in their stuff, right? They create incredible products. They deliver exceptional service. And so people keep coming back over and over and over again, right? So the first sequence of selling, um, Hello, I was with the, okay. I had a girls in my inbox hand and he said, thanks, but no thanks. And they block you. I sell to our jury. I post a collection every day. People want it. My link is in Bible. Yeah, I never cold message me. I know. It's like, people are smart, okay? Like if they want something, they'll go get it. I love that. That's amazing. So the first sequence of selling is whatever you're going to offer, be obsessed with it. Make sure it's valuable. Make sure you took yourself through the method. Be proud of it. Make sure you're using it because the end, it's the money comes because of everything you do before it. The product and the, and the service has to be amazing. The way that people interact with you before they buy, that has to be amazing. Their experience with you has to be amazing. The, the energetics before the sale matters so much. The money comes before because of everything you do before the actual sale is made, right? And then the money keeps coming because of actually what you deliver, right? Because here's the other thing too. There are people who are really good at sales, but they're not so good at actually delivering the thing that they promise. And so that's kind of sad too. And so don't do that. If you're in my world, I will tell you that's a bunch of crap. Don't sell things that are not valuable to people, okay? I don't want to teach people to be salesy so that then they're like, you know, getting people and nobody wants to feel like they got it, okay? So the sale, when it comes in, is equally as important. So if you're hyping up something is amazing, then you better deliver it. And the delivery of it, the product, the service, the whatever, has to be amazing. 
Also, the experience that has someone has with you when they're buying has to be amazing. They also have to feel like if something's not right, that they trust that you will help them figure it out or you'll be there, right? Because if you're good at selling and getting people and the thing you deliver is crap, that will be your first and last sale from that buyer. And again, if you understand how networking works, like you could get a really bad review and people could be like, don't go there. This is not good for business. It's just, you're never going to have brand longevity. And that's not what we want, right? We want what we talk about in our marketing to be just as exceptional through the whole process. The before, the after, the before, the middle, and the after of the sale is all equally important because what else do we want? We want referrals. You know, so if you believe in an organic business and I've built my business completely organic and half my clients are people that have been referred to me. And what does that mean? That means my experience and people had an amazing experience with me and what I've delivered is amazing. Brand longevity is like, get referrals, get word of mouth. We want people to tell other people about us. We want the repeat buyers. Uh, Mirrors, I message people, but I never pull message anyway. I build a genuine relationship with people with long-term vision. Yes, beautiful. I love it, right? We want brand longevity, right? So we want everything to be important. The thing we sell, the in-between the sale as it's happening, and then the after. We want people to keep coming. This is so important. So again, I'm just going to say this one more time. If there's something not right about what you're selling, if you're a service, take yourself through it. And if you're not hyped up, then you know your method is not that good. Let's let's innovate. Let's go learn a new skill. If you feel like you don't know something, go learn a new skill. If your product is you're not obsessed with it, well then innovate on it. Make it better. This is so important because otherwise we're wasting our time. We're selling things and thinking that nobody likes it. And we're not good enough, and that's not true. We're just not being real with ourselves. Yeah, customer care. Yeah, is follow up. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So go back to the drawing board. You know, and if you do think it's incredible then those, that confidence is going to radiate through your marketing and your business and, and your offers and your marketing and your advertising. Like people feel what you feel, right? So create amazing things, deliver them. The deliverable is just as important. It's gotta be amazing. Give people amazing customer experience, make people feel valued and then the money will keep coming back and you'll get referrals and you'll get repeat buyers. This is why we don't have to lean in on people. We get to just actually also tap into people's networks because we do a really good job. This is the kind of business model that I'm interested in creating. And I hope this is one day the only business model that every business and company on the planet chooses to believe in. This is what we need. More great businesses creating great things and no one should feel like they got gotten or sold something awful, right? A great business model with a great business experience will keep bringing the referrals and everything else. Right. So I have constantly started this from the beginning and I've never used sales ad. I've never outreach. I didn't even have a website for a couple of years. I still don't really have a website I have like Kajabi. And then I've just used landing pages so people can find stuff. Even if you look at my landing pages, sometimes they're just the graphics. Sometimes it says a few little things like I don't need to convince people in my copy either. But again, to each their own, you get to do that. But I just really trust like the people that are really interested in my work, especially as a coach, you're going to come into my videos. If you're a coach, the number one way people are going to pick you is you got to go live. So for those of you who are afraid, you got to show your face. You got to speak. You got to share your opinion. You got to share your energy because no one's going to hire a coach or someone that's a service provider that's just writing posts. That doesn't work, okay? But so what I have constantly focused is on creating valuable offers, constantly investing, upgrading my skills becoming more valuable, giving more quality, valuable experiences to the people in my world. I focus on attraction marketing. I upgrade my branding, right? Like, and it works. And the one, the businesses that are thriving all the time, this is the kind of business model that they have. You know, the way people today in our world value businesses is when they feel valued as a buyer through their experience with you and the thing that they're getting, it's the best result that they can possibly get. Like it's that simple, right? The ideal here is to have business longevity and to build a business model that's great and has referrals and values people and people feel cared and they wanna share. So here's another thing too. Like we talked a lot about gratitude day one. How much do you value the people that are in your world right now? 
How much do you value the buyers that you do have right now? How much do you value the clients that you have right now? How much are you putting more value back into your business, into your coaching? Are you upgrading your skills? Are you upgrading your marketing, your product? Are you making it better? How much value are you putting into that stuff? The customer experience. I'll catch you on the replay. Mwah, I love you. I'll catch you on the replay. They are everything. Yes, 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 yes. Right? So all of these things are important. Just think about this first. And also, do you have staying power? Right? So the way that people trust us is in our consistency, right? Like, especially when you're buying like a service, right? It's like, if you're not being consistent, like I'm going to be worried that you're going to take my money and run away. People want to make sure you're not going to just take their money and go away. Right. And so the longer you're in business, even if maybe your business is not hitting the months that you want, the more you're there, people trust you're not going anywhere. And once you get to that five year mark, oh my God, celebrate yourself because a lot of people don't make it. Uh, let's say people feel the power of your commitment in your lives, your marketing and your programs. Thank you. I do. I'm so committed. Like, I love you guys so much. I mean, if you met me in real life and I ran into, you know how crazy this is. So I had a few months ago, maybe it was, yeah, no, it was last, last winter. I, my kids needed something from the grocery store. So we ran in there and I ran into a client that was in my program and I was like, oh my God. And we were like, this is so awesome. And the next day my, we needed something for dinner. So I had to go back to the same store and I ran into another client that was in one of my group programs that was all the way from Chicago. And I'm like, what are the chances? And we hugged it out. And it was just so funny. She's just like, you are like, who are you are on, on like online? I'm like, of course I am. But that's just so cool. Anyways, I want to share that. So it, this is why I'm sharing this is because authenticity, be who you are always, 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 and always on and offline. This is really important. Okay. So staying power, people want to make sure you're not going to take their money and run away. So you got to keep showing up. You know, we can't have a business and find all our validations from like, and get all our validation and our circumstantial power to show up through people validating us through sales. Like that cannot be the reason I will tell you right now, if for some reason no one was paying me anymore, I would still do this for free because this is what I'm going to do to the, for the rest of my life. This is, I know what I'm designed to do literally, but this is my passion. I love this so much. Even when my family comes to all my friends, I'm like, I learned this thing. I need to tell, this is who I am. I care so much about people. I care about this. I want everybody to live the best life. So if I didn't get paid for this, I'd do this, but then I'd probably have to get another job. So I wouldn't be able to come on here as much, but I will still do this. Right. Like, I feel like as an old lady, I'll be like doing podcasts and stuff like th this is the vibe. Right. So I'm not going anywhere. So that's another thing, too, is like if you have a business and you're doing this thing just for the money or the money's not coming in and now you don't want to show up, that's circumstantial power. Why are you doing this? It's got to be passion. I tell my kids this all the time. Right. Because two of my kids are in in high school right now. And, you know, they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I'm like, it's okay. You'll figure it out. I'm a six line. It took me 30 years to go through a million careers in school. But, you know, I'm like, you'll figure it out. But I told them is what's important is follow your passion and the money will flow. You got to be obsessed with what you're doing as a career, as a job, whatever it is, because if there's no passion, you're not going to want to show up for it. You're not going to give your best. You're not going to be lit up. Like, I really believe in this. Authenticity is key. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So we also want to make sure that people feel before they invest in us that they can reach us if something goes wrong. So that's also really important, right? And they want to feel like you really believe in what you built, right? They want to believe in your values. They want to believe that they can connect with you in some way. This is why I do believe coaches who run a lot of live things, they are more impactful and more powerful and definitely grow bigger because I don't know, I couldn't really just, you know, go buy a program from like Gabby Bernstein's, for instance, that was just self-paced. I can never connect or feel her energy or ask her questions. I like to be able to like connect with someone if I want to, right? And I'm not saying that's not valuable, but for a lot of people, they do like love the live stuff, but you can have a mix. Okay. So doesn't matter what you want with your business, but I'm just saying, do people do more than ever love that connection? They really do. So let's get into selling during the time that we're in. Okay. So the most important thing that you can do right now, okay, because there are different strategies for selling depending on the economy. So for people who are born into wealth, 
their patterns don't really change in any economy, right? So I was listening to a mastermind call a couple of weeks and this mentor was saying that they're connected to a lot of luxury brands, you know, like Louis Vuitton and stuff like that. And they were saying how like the, the, the selling and like the buying has not changed for people who are born into wealth. But for other people that are not born into wealth, they their buying patterns have shifted a little bit, right? There is a lot of inflation, right? And so things are more expensive and people have to like, you know, these economic times are not the times where people spend like crazy, right? And which is good because this is where I'm going to really explain to you guys. This is where actually the best businesses are birthed, right? Because who here, let me know in the comments, had any kind of renovation, construction done on their house or knows anybody that did or had a pool put in during lockdowns and stuff like that. Um, because what we notice is a lot of businesses that had a little too much money rolling in, and this happened a lot in the construction industry, is that they didn't really care if things were taking long and they didn't really care if you gave them SAS because they had 30 more people calling them that day to put in a pool to want to get construction done. Sometimes businesses that are actually not good businesses, when there are a lot of demand, they don't tend to value their buyers. They don't actually tend to do a good job because it's like, whatever, I messed this up. You get mad. I don't care. There's another person calling me. Um, thank you for talking about this. I'm so happy, right? And so this is where actually good businesses are going to be birthed right now, right? Because the businesses that are not good, what's going to happen is, yeah, they're going to make a lot of sales. So like we're, we saw this in the construction industry, but how many bad reviews are those people going to get? Are those construction companies going to get really bad? And are they going to get referrals? No, no, they're not, right? And so even like, for instance, let's say everybody was getting eyelash extensions, and the businesses that were really bad, that didn't really care, they didn't care about the health of your eyelashes, they didn't care about the buyer, they didn't care if they messed up because there's so much demand. Eventually, when the economy becomes what it is right now, so we are in a value economy right now, those businesses are not going to do well because people are not going to give them referrals. They're not going to be repeat buyers. Yes, I've experienced that thing. Yeah, like so many people. I knew so many people that had so many hard issues with people. Like they didn't care. There was just so much demand. But then again, those businesses are not going to do well later on when there isn't demand because they're going to have a shit ton of bad reviews and no referrals. That's not good for business, right? So this is the time that actually the good businesses, the people that care about the quality of their work, that really value people are going to blow up. They are. So we are in right now a value economy. So people that are born into wealth, they're still buying the same way. But people who right now are a little bit, uh, things are a little expensive. Things are a little uncertain in the world. What they're looking right now is making purchases in things that they really value. Like they really, really, really value. And so what we need to do more than ever right now in this economy is to continue and to really actually go over and beyond in the things that we offer and the value and really showcasing the value of our offers and, and services. Okay, this is really, really important because now, so not people who are born to wealth, but people in the economy right now, they're thinking before they make a purchase, where is actually the best place that's going to give me the most value for what I'm about to spend? So they're asking themselves questions like this or that. What, right? Like what makes, like what's going to make sense to me by, is it going to be this or it's going to be this? What's going to give me the most value, right? So they're going to ask themselves like, Am, is it valuable right now for me to invest in a program that teaches me skills and marketing skills? Or is it more valuable for me to go on a vacation? Is it more valuable for me right now to go have a whole, get a hotel with my partner and have a night out at a restaurant? Or is it more valuable for me to buy a purse? Is it more valuable for me right now to go on a vacation with my family or put a swimming pool in, into our backyard? What's more valuable, this program or this program, this training or this coach? Like, what's more valuable, this eyelash or that? Like, nails or eyelash? This is what people are asking right now. This is a value economy. And so people are choosing what's the most valuable for me 
and they're looking at your page, at your profile, you, if you're speaking, if you're a service provider and trying to see, is this person going to give me a lot of value for the money that I'm going to spend with them? Right. So as online entrepreneurs, knowing this, it is so important that we showcase our value more than ever right now. And even more than ever, really care about the people that are showing up on our page that are into our world. Like I give so much gratitude for everybody that shows live. I love you so much. If I miss a comment, it's not that I don't love it. I just didn't see it. I'm riffing. Right. But I love you guys so much. And I'm always thanking people who share my work so much and testimony, all that, like care about your people, care about everybody that interacts with you. Because everybody who interacts with you too, we have to remember is not always your potential buyer, but if they find you valuable and they find you as a person who really cares about people, they're going to want to tell other people about you, right? Oh, I swear to God, I have like a cold or something going down. I've been like ugh, feeling really off or like really pasty. But anyway, sorry about that. At least I didn't spill water on myself yet on this live, right? So what's so important is that you showcase your value, Right. And so even last yesterday's call, like I asked you guys, like if you think, okay, I maybe I need more skills or knowledge so that I'm more valuable to my buyers and my business, go and invest and become more valuable to your people, right? But you've got to showcase why is your work so valuable and really ask yourself if you like have a product, like why is my product so unique and amazing? Authentic is so important, yes, right? And this is also a time to work on our mindset and emotional intelligence more than ever. Because sometimes we get caught up with like, everybody's buying from that girl, everybody's buying from this code, everyone's buying from this place. And then we start thinking in our head that we're not good enough. That's not it. That's not it. We just need to start focusing on really showcasing that we are a valuable person. And if someone invests in, in our product and us, that they're going to get a lot of value and that we're really taking care of people and really caring about people more than ever customer experience with you, whether they're buying or in the sale or after the sale is got to be through the roof. The entrepreneurs right now that are still scaling and they're so magnetic right now are grateful for what they have right now. The clients, the followers, the community, the things in their life, hint, hint, hint from day one, you got to be tapping into gratitude every day. Like I'm like, thank you. Everybody's showing up. Everybody's doing my world. Everybody who's still continuing in my programs. I'm so freaking grateful so that they continue to come back. Gratitude brings more, right? So we, the people that are magnetic are grateful for what they have. The people that are in their world right now. Okay. And they're grateful for their money and their clients that they have, and they really value themselves so that they're still continually investing in skills or you know, in their business to make it more valuable, not just for themselves, but for their buyers and clients, right? Because the more valuable you, you, valuable you become, the more valuable you are to your clients, right? So like even for me as a coach, like the more I'm learning, the more valuable I am gonna be my buyers and, and my clients, right? Which is really important, right? But the entrepreneurs that are the least magnetic right now, First of all, right now, they're in a state of fear. They're the ones that don't see their own value. They don't see the value in their offer. So the energetics are like ee, wonky. They're the ones right now that are scared and they don't want to be as visible or they're selling less or they're not launching or they're completely cutting all their stuff in half or selling it for like pennies on the dollar. Like, you know, and they're also doing that self-deprecating thing that we talked about in day one. They're in constant fear. They're worrying. They're not enough. They feel like their industry is dying. Like all of that energetics right there, you know, and if you understand manifestation, that's why it's not working. And this is why like the number one thing we got to do for ourselves too, is to continue to put that effort and work on our mindset and see the value of who we are and then really look at the value of our stuff so we bring that confidence like i sell amazing incredible things and i'm a valuable person like we got to work on that personal power i don't like to hound people i don't like speak up i'm shy so i don't get the raise well let's raise our hand now let's be brave right so doing mindset work and emotional intelligence work and working on our value as a person, our value as a business is going to help us really thrive in this economy. And I will tell you right now, I really do believe the entrepreneurs are like, all entrepreneurs are like natural born leaders. We really do go first because when brick and mortar businesses shutting down and people being scared, the entrepreneurs that are magnetic, they keep moving, they keep moving, they keep selling, they keep investing, they keep 
adding value. They keep showing up. They are actually helping other people rise that are scary. So for the you entrepreneurs who are still selling, launching, doing the things, you are the beacon of hope. You're going to help the other entrepreneurs that are a little bit scared right now that, that don't, don't see the value and they're really getting caught up in the fear of the world. There is a huge impact on our economy when us online entrepreneurs start to become afraid to sell and afraid to spend money and afraid to invest. Entrepreneurs, when we start to get really scared of selling, we start dimming down and getting worried, we impact everything. It honestly becomes really contagious. So we got to rise from that because if we start leading, we keep selling, the economy is going to keep moving. But if we get scared of selling, it's like a domino. Everybody starts falling. This is why in like back in 2020, when the brick and mortar businesses had to shut down, if the online entrepreneurs did not rise as leaders and keep selling and keep moving the money and the, the economy, where would we be? So let's give a pat on our back that we um, keep moving the economy and we're helping people rise that are scary, that are scared. Like we do go first. We are the leaders. We are going to be the ones that keep the economy going. So as a leader, as an entrepreneur, no matter what happens in these times, you have to keep showing up and you have to keep selling and you got to keep adding value so that other people continue to rise. Otherwise, if we all stop, it gets so contagious and then everybody calibrates down. We have to keep selling right now and not be scared of that. Just like in 2020. And I love the people that said they had the biggest year in 2020. And the people that had the biggest year in 2020, keep note, were the ones that kept investing. They kept circulating money into the, into the economy. They kept showing up. They kept launching. They kept going. They're the leaders. And they kept the economy rolling. And then they're ones that had the biggest year. This is what's possible for you right now if you continue to keep selling and investing and doing what you've got to do. But you've got to work on your personal power and you got to keep, stop comparing yourself and just focus on continually to create value for people in this value economy because people are getting a little scared. And then sometimes when you know, you're know you not connected to the entrepreneurs, you're in the real world and you see people struggling, it, it gets scared. You get those, those fears, they, they get stuck in your head and your heart. Should I be selling? Is it selfish? Like, what if, oh my God, my friend's business is struggling. Oh my God, like what if that happens to me? Don't get caught up in that, okay? Don't get caught up on that. Get yourself back into alignment here. Trust me, people are still buying, investing and businesses are still growing. The ones that are growing are the ones that keep showing up and doing what they have to do no matter what. We don't want to not sell and we don't want to sell less or slash our prices completely half or to nothing. Like, because it will become contagious to everybody. And then this is where the economy gets worse. So right now in this moment, I'm speaking to the leader. If you're a leader, you go first. Okay, just like in 2020, keep selling, keep investing, keep adding value to yourself and your business, keep launching. I swear entrepreneurs are the greatest leaders. And I think this is a lot to do because I really do believe online entrepreneurs are the ones that do the most mindset work. They're the ones that do end up spending up more on coaching. Not as many brick and mortar businesses do a lot of the mindset work like we do or the emotional intelligence work we do because when you're online, everybody's projecting crap on you and <laughs> there's triggers all over the place. You don't see that as much when you're in a brick and mortar business, right? And this is why we keep going. We have that momentum because it's like, no, I'm going to keep my mindset sh sh like sharp. I'm going to keep doing what I got to do. I go first. So keep doing the mindset work. Right now, if you're selling and you're launching, I'm telling you right now, you're very unique in the economy. And I think you should really anchor that in that you're a freaking amazing badass, okay? Because I'm watching people already dim a little bit, sell a little less, completely slash their prices. They're, they're starting to disappear. And then I'm seeing other people rising and investing and launching and growing. And I'm focusing on that, that side, not the other side here. People... Don't market less. Keep doing what you got to do and you will have like your biggest year and you will be the one that stands out and you will help people calibrate. Here's the thing too. When you're the one that does the things that people are scared to do, you are the leader. And the leaders are always the magnetic ones that people go, I need to hire that person because she's doing the thing that I'm scared to do. And then everybody else that watches you rise when they're scared you're the expander for them. 
And they go, if she can do it, I can do it. If she can do it, I can do it. Because a lot of people are scared. But when you're doing the thing that people are scared, not only is it actually going to be more business for you and you're going to attract people because you're like, I need to learn your mindset. Like, how do you have the courage and mindset to keep doing this even when times are wild? And then they're going to want to invest in you and they're going to buy from you. So leaders, you are freaking magnetic and you're amazing. And you keep doing what you got to do and don't get stuck on the numbers and all that. Don't get stuck in the fear. Keep going. You will stand out in this economy. You will. And you got to be patient. And we'll talk a little bit more about trust on day four, but you got to be patient too. In every economy, no matter what the economy is, there are always buyers. And there are people who don't have money fears and have finances. So there are people always buying. And then there's people that are like me when I was in a state of like, I'm in debt with two little girls. I have no reason to be investing in coaching and taking a line of credit out. And also then being in a pandemic, I, I still do it. And so I knew that if I can do it in the circumstances that I'm in, I know people can invest and still buy and do the thing that they have to do. And you are an energetic match for people that are courageous and brave like you when you're the person that goes and does the things that you're scared, that other people are scared to do. And that helps you to understand that if you're investing and you're doing what you got to do, you are an energetic match for other people that are going to invest. There are lots of brave people like you, but in every economy, there's always buyers. There is always buyers. So don't hide don't do less of what you're doing. Keep doing what you got to do. Selling is your job. Selling is what you're serving in the world with your amazing, valuable things. And another thing I really want to make note of, and I want you guys to like share this with everybody. Entrepreneurs, let's support each other. Like we got to support each other. Like if, it, and support all businesses. If you're buying something from a business, a product, whatever, like share it. Did you get your eyelashes done today? Give them a share. Did you get your hair done? Give your hair artist a share. Did you just watch a masterclass or someone something free? Like share it. Like, like this is how the economy keeps moving. We got to share and support each other. Like anything that you're buying, you know, a local business, like it means so much to those businesses. Anytime that I buy a product locally too, like I'm sharing this stuff. You know, any, any masterclass or anything, like I'm, I'm sharing people, I'm tagging people and, and not, not even just sharing, I'm telling people in my real world, hey, like you wanna try Health Burno? Like this stuff's amazing, right? If you see someone doing a giveaway, share it, right? Just share it, share the things you're buying, right? Let's help each other out, let's support each other. It means the world to these businesses, right? And we want the economy to get booming again. We want money to keep moving, right? It is still moving, but we want more of that happening, right? So because this is a value economy, we need to focus our marketing and our selling and our advertising and really showcasing why we are so valuable. Why are we so valuable? And this means like, you know, if you're a service provider, a coach, give free value, right? Connect deeper with people, go live more, have conversations, really reply to your, your comments and your posts, talk to your audience more, you know, give even more amazing customer experience. Like get, get reviews, get testimonials, you know, like ask people for testimonials and people don't want to just ask them, you know, if you have a product, look at your product and say, like, ask yourself, what's so valuable my product and how can I showcase this more? Like, how can I express this? So an example is like, let's say you sell makeup, right? What's, what's so valuable about your makeup? Maybe your makeup is so valuable that it, it's long lasting. It's long lasting. So how can you showcase that, right? Can you have like show, you know, yourself doing it in the morning, go live, connect with your people, and then go back later in the evening and show that it's like still amazing. It's like 16 hours of long lasting, right? How can you showcase what's really valuable about your stuff, right? Is it high definition? Is it because your makeup is from natural? Like, you know what I mean? Showcase the parts that are so valuable. What is it about your product that is so valuable and, and how do you showcase that even more? If you're a hairstylist, what is it about your hairstyling techniques or what you do that is so valuable, right? Maybe you say like, oh, Alina, like hair health. Like I make sure that 
priority is hair health, right? So showcase that on your Instagram, showing your stories, how you care so much about someone's hair health, hair health, Michelle Armstrong. Thank you. No problem. Right. Showcase that, right. Can you share that in your business? Like, what is it that is so valuable and unique and you got to start showcasing that more long lasting, organic, natural, like, um, high definition, right? Maybe you sell energy bars. Can you showcase your energy bars are so valuable because like everything's sourced organically and sourced locally and you help all these other businesses, right? And there's a probiotic in it. Like what makes it unique? This is what we got to showcase. Like if people are going to choose you or this other person, they're going to look at like what's more valuable, this coach or this coach, this program or this program, this makeup or this makeup. This makeup here is more valuable for me because it's long lasting. But then the other person is going to be like, I'm going to choose this makeup here because I want something light. If you have a service, you know, get live, talk to your people, ask for testimonials, you know, do master classes, connect more with people, right? And then no matter what business you have, can you look at your customer experience and and how do you make it even better? You know, like, it's not about saying, pick me, pick me. I'm the best. That's not what we're showcasing. It's like, how are you valuable to someone in a value economy? What is it that is so unique about your thing? And how can you showcase that even more on your social media, on your Instagram, on your Facebook? If you're a coach, okay, so listen to this. If you're a coach, I want you to ask yourself, and this is something else too. We often do this thing where we're like, what do people want to see? What do people want? And the thing is, you are your ideal buyer. So you need to ask yourself, what do I found valuable? Valuable. If I'm going to buy a product, what is it that I'm looking at on, on someone's social media that's going to make me want to buy their product or hire this coach? So here's an amazing example. Like if you were going to hire a coach, and so we'll take my example. So my brand stands for the person who wants it all with ease. They want a full life transformation and a full business transformation, right? So if I was going to hire a coach that was a full life and business transformation, what am I looking to see on their account that's going to make me choose that coach? What is it? So for me, I would want to go to their account and I would want to see the following things. I would want to see a lifestyle. What's their lifestyle? I would want to see location freedom, time freedom, because that's important to me. I don't want to be a business, a, like a coach who's hustling all the time. I would want to see on their profile somewhere that they have a business that works in the way that I want it to work. I would want to see that they have the relationship that the relationship that they have works. I would want to be able to hear them talk. I would want to be in their energy. You know, I would want to read or listen to their opinions. Do they match to my values, right? And because I'm someone that values beauty, like, and I, and I value like aesthetics and stuff like that of a branding. Like, I want to look like, does this person also care about how their branding looks, right? Do they put effort in their branding, right? I want to be able to read their thoughts. I want to be able to watch a video. I want variety right? If you're a fitness or health coach, think about this. If you're going to hire a health and fitness coach, what is it that you want to go see on someone's profile that's going to make you want to buy from them? I would look to see, do you have the body, <laughs> right? Are you proof of concept, right? Are you living a happy life? I want to see what you're eating. I want to see you working out. I want to see the kind of workouts you do. I probably want to see before and after photos, either of you or your clients. I'd probably love to see some testimonials. I would like to see a, a lifestyle that works, what you eat, right? The best way to showcase value and what you want to showcase on your social media that's going to make your ideal buyer buy from you is ask yourself, what is it that I look for before, what is it am I looking for to hire a coach or a product, whatever it is, right? What is it that I'm looking for? What do I want to see? And so you got to understand that you are your ideal buyer. So just ask yourself, what would I want to see? And all those answers are going to give you so much clarity because you really do attract who you are. I built my social media account the way that I want to be captivated by someone else that I want to hire, right? I want to see a lifestyle and a business that works. I want to hear your opinion. 
I want to see that you have the kind of life that I want, the time freedom, the romance, the family, the business that actually works in the way that I want it to work. Morning, just hopping on. Thank you for service here. I appreciate you. Tell me, I appreciate you too. Hello, gorgeous, right? When it comes to services and coaches, like we do got to get on video. Like again, like no one's going to hire you from a written post. They want to feel your energy. They want to hear you. They want to hear your view on life, right? They want to connect with you. So this is why we also have to share all the parts of us, our authentic parts of us and not hide anything. You know, if you would ask me five years ago or maybe maybe six, seven years ago, especially if I was, in the, when I was still in the corporate world that I would be talking about manifestation, astrology and like all the stuff that I talk about now, I'd be like, are you crazy? And now I'm like, I talk about it all and I constantly attract people and clients into my world because you just gotta be all of you and not hold back. You do attract who you are. So instead of asking yourself, what do people want to see on my profile in order for them to buy from me? You got to ask yourself, what do I want to see that would make me want to hire me or buy the product that I'm selling? The worst thing you can do is create a social media presence and a profile and marketing and advertising based on what other people will like. And who are these other people? Like you need to ask yourself, what would I want to see? that would make me want to hire a coach or buy the makeup. And that's what you got to create your social media about, right? Like if you ask yourself, like, do people want to see lots of testimonials? Do they want to see constantly lifestyle photos? And do you want to see blah, blah, blah? Like stop asking what people want and ask yourself, what do I want to see? Like, like if you're asking, if you're going to ask me a question, like, do people want to see constant lifestyle photos or constant testimonials? I don't know. When you go on people's pages, do you like seeing constant lifestyle photos? Do you like seeing lots of testimonials? If not, then, then you should probably do it with your account because you do attract who you are, right? Like whatever you love to see, that's what you need to be focusing on. That's what you want to be showcasing. Do you care about nice aesthetics or do you not care? Do you like long videos or do you like short videos? Do you like long posts or short posts? Or do you like variety? What do you like? How often do you look at stories? How many stories do you like? Because I have people ask me all the time, like, how many stories should I do? Three or four? I'm like, I don't know. How many do you like? I don't know. I just usually click. I stop clicking after four. Then probably stick to four. I like having lots of stories. I love seeing what people are up to then do that. You are your ideal buyer, right? And again, like this whole masterclass is about do it your way in the way that you want to do it. This is your business. These are your rules. You get to have it all in the way that you want to do it. This is so important. So look in, lean in. What do I like to see? What do I want to see when I hire blah, 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 whatever it is. I create my social page to look like the way that I would like to be captivated by another person. And so be it. And this is what I like to see. And I like to have variety. I do believe in variety, like having some photos, having some reels, having some videos, right? So something I would love for all of you to do is just like, also look at your social media, like your Instagram and your Facebook. And I also want you to ask yourself and get really honest with yourself. Are you proud with how it looks? Is this something that would captivate you to buy? Right? Does it represent you? Are your photos up to date? Or are you using a profile picture from 1980? Right? Do, do you think something needs an upgrade? Is it fully you authentically? Because we want also, this is something important, is people who invest in themselves are people that value themselves. People that don't value themselves or value their relationships or value their business, they just don't invest in themselves. Like, you don't invest in your mindset, in learning new skills, in your business, in your relationship, if you don't care about you, your dreams, your relationships, and your clients. You just don't. So if we want to attract people who value themselves and are the people who invest in themselves, I really want you to look at everything that you put into your business. Is it something that someone that would invest in that kind of value? Like, would they value what you have? Like, the, the look of it all? And I'm not saying you need to get a whole bunch of like professional photos because I got clients with like selfies and asking my mom to take pictures of me. But like, I'm just saying like, 
if you're really looking for more high-end clients or people who are really going to invest in themselves in this time, like there should be a level of care for your social media, right? Your social media is your business card. And I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before that I talked about, like, there's going to be no more paper resumes. Businesses are going to look at social media. And I think someone said that their company already does that. They're going to see what does this person care about their values? Do they, do they actually put care into their business, into their own appearance, right? This is not about you looking like, you know, a supermodel or anything like that. It's all everyone's preference, right? You got to be you, but is there a level of care or is everything just kind of messy? Do you have dark pictures, dark videos, like people can't see you clearly? Like we got to care about our businesses. This is a real business and we're going to attract people who value themselves, or invest in themselves. We got to value ourselves. We got to value our businesses and we got to actually care about this stuff. Your social media is your business card. So when you look at your profile and you look at your Facebook and, and even just like your profile picture, are you proud of that? If that was your business card, would you be proud to hand that out? Would you be proud? Just ask yourself. These are just some things to think about. Like your profile pic, that's like the first thing people see on Facebook. And then the second thing they look at is what's your backdrop? Does it say something about you or is your photo really old, dark, a selfie from 1988, right? We need to do a little couple upgrades. You don't need professional photos. Trust me, I see people skyrocketing their business with selfies, but they care about the selfies. They do it in good lighting. They kind of dress up. They put themselves together, right? Like you got to be authentic, but you also got to look like someone who cares, and it is true, and people can get triggered by this, but a woman who really does put some value and care into her appearance, whether, and I'm not even talking about makeup or anything like that, but just a nice blouse and you brush your hair today, when, you, when a person looks at you and they can see you value yourself, they're more interested in investing in you because they're like, okay, if she values herself, she's going to value me. Selfies in 1988. Oh, yeah, you're right. Never mind. Then it makes no sense. But like a photo from 1988 that's like dark, you know? check in by someone in the dark, whatever, you know what I mean? You know what I mean. Um, so this is just some things to think about, right? Like if you're going to hire a real estate agent and your real estate agent showed up in sweatpants, messy bun, you know, didn't brush their teeth today, you know, had like something in their tooth, like, would you be a little worried? You would, you're going to be like, I don't think this person is going to really take care of me. They don't even want to take care of themselves. So some things to think about. Okay. So your backdrop on your Facebook and your profile picture on your Facebook, that's the first thing people look at, you know, are you proud of it? Is it up to date? Is it recent? Is it really an expression of you? Doesn't have to be professional, but we want some level of care. Okay. Valuable, it attracts valuable people who care, attract people who care, people who invest in themselves, attract people who invest in themselves. Right. And now with your Instagram, it's the same thing. Is your profile showcase who you are? Does it represent who you are, what you value, what you offer? So something people really look at when they go on Instagram is they look at, well, they look at the highlights, right? Are you proud of everything that looks like? This is your magazine cover, right? So your highlights should showcase what you value, what you're up to, what are your current offers, your testimonials should be in there because that's usually what people look at. And on Instagram, the other thing they really look at are like, what are your pinned posts? You know, the things that you've pinned on your reels and your posts, which should be a variety of like something unique about you, something you value, um, something you've accomplished, maybe it's a, like something that you're currently offering. They want to get to sense of like, okay, I can tell this person's a business coach and she obviously values this and I value that and she's spiritual and I'm spiritual, right? Uh, 1980, okay. I saw that comment, okay. So here's the last thing I want to say. This is like a money code. And I'm going to talk about trust and faith and a few other things on day four. Um, this is the one thing I want to say here on a money code. No matter what economy that we're in and no matter what circumstance you're in, I want you to always be the type of person that believes in magic and miracles and that you're an excellent receiver and money can come into your life in any which way and that you're always open to be surprised by the universe this or something better the best has yet to come you've got to have this kind of mindset I believe anywhere I am at any time even when I'm sleeping and I'm not selling or launching anything someone can buy something someone can gift me money just because I could win something 
I believe that even when I'm not launching something or selling something, someone can click my link tree because I track geniuses and they can go on my landing page and buy a program, self-paced, a current one, at the end of one. I believe that I am open to, I believe I could always attract magic money and surprises from the universe. Always, always, always. I am open and I'm amazing receiver. Send it to me universe. Be this kind of person. Be optimistic. Be grateful for what you have. Gratitude is the step to more. Money can come to me always from anywhere and I'm open to receive it. Like ingrain this in your mind. And I want you to understand that even when you are making an offer to a group of people or you're talking to people about something, you're selling to people, I want you to know that's not always when the money is going to come or from that person. So for me, as I've been talking to groups of people over the last three days, I know that I'm not necessarily speaking to my potential buyer. Half of you might not ever buy from me. I, I'm not interested in this. Okay? this is, I'm not necessarily like really speaking to my potential buyer. The people that listen to me sell or talk about my offers, they don't necessarily have to be my potential buyer. The number one thing that I care about is that for everyone who does listen to me, what I'm concerned about is that they find me valuable, that what I say and what they hear is valuable. And then it makes them think of a person who will also find what I'm talking about valuable. And they will think of a friend or a family member or a colleague and go tell them about me and say, you need this person. The thing that I am most concerned about and the thing I care about the most is that anybody who listens to me speak or is in my world, hears value. And then they'll think of another person who might need me. I bet you, and I can't for sure say, but I bet you almost half of you who are watching this or not just this, but just been in my world, you, you came into my world because somebody shared my work. You can let me know too. Some of you might never buy from me or not right now is not your timing, but you find me so valuable and you will think of somebody that needs to come and listen to me. And you know that someone that really does need to invest in my coaching and you'll go tell them. Half of the people in my world are people because are, are in my world because of people who shared my work. This is why also for you, like you got to love on everybody that interacts with your business page, the shares, the commenters, the people that like, I give gratitude so much to every single person who shares my work because they're connecting to me to someone in their network that could be the potential buyer, the person that I'm meant to be with. Yes, and I have shared you. And I know you're so beautiful. I love you so much. I'm so grateful for everybody who shares, who tags, who tells people, word of mouth. So I want you to know that even when you are selling to a group of people, you're not necessarily talking to your ideal buyer. But what you need to care about is that whatever you're saying, whatever you're selling, whatever you're offering, it is of the highest value. It is the best you got. So that even the people that listen to you, that the thing is not right for them, that they think this person is really valuable. I think of this person, this person, my aunt, my cousin, I'm going to connect them. I'm going to share word of mouth. This is the magic. This is the magic. So coming back to this, how I, what this all is all about is we need to keep focusing on creating valuable things, valuing people, giving gratitude for the people who are in our world. We need to keep sharing each other's stuff, you buy it from a business, go share it. I'm telling you, it means the world to them. This is how the economy keeps moving. Focus on creating value. Focus on showcasing why your product, your service is value. Showcase why you are a valuable person. And it starts with you. It always starts with the relationship we have with ourselves. If you do not feel like you are a valuable person, ask yourself why. And this will come back to day two, because I don't know enough, because I'm not good enough because I don't have skills. So if you value your dreams and yourself enough, go get the skill, go get the knowledge that you need, go get resourceful, be brave, be the leader. The ones that rise, the ones that keep selling, keep investing, keep circulating, you are the ones that are going to have massive years and your business is going to continue to thrive.
I promise you, just keep showing up, keep showing up. You know what you create is amazing. Don't dim, don't let the fear take over your mind or your heart. Just keep showing up, okay? I'm going to keep showing up and I'm going to support you and love on all of you every single day. And I hope you all love on each other too. This is how we rise. This is how the economy will keep moving, okay? Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to work out. Don't get stuck in the fear, okay? And don't hang out with too many crabs in a bucket. They'll pull you down. So I'm going to be doing a draw for nine people who are going to win 50% off any of my offers, which is going to be amazing. And all you have to do is share. And every time you share and tag, I'm going to be posting you into a draw. And we're going to do that on Tuesday. I'm going to put this in the event section, the time. I'm going to double check my schedule. So don't hold my word to it yet. But day four is going to be Tuesday. I'm going to go put that in the event section. Um, so go find out where you were born. If you don't know yet, ask your mama, Look at, um, call the hospital, find out what time. If not, if you don't know yours and you can't find it by Tuesday, get your partner or your kids and just listen. And if you can't find anybody's time, just listen and see if something activates you and makes you feel like, oh my God, this makes sense. This is me. This is going to be like a little intro, okay? And then there is going to be a program which will go deeper into all the things. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for tagging. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being live. Thank you for commenting. I love you so much. If I could hug you, I would. We're going to be okay. We're going to rise. And I will talk about what's coming up. A Coach Academy is going to be launching. I can't wait to show you guys. Oh, the social media graphic just came back. Social media and Coach Academy. You get those together in that program and the sales program, but they are going to be running at the same time because Coach Academy is a hybrid. So there's 16 pre-recorded modules, but there's going to be seven new modules and deepenings. Plus at the same time, we're going to be doing the social media sales stuff so that we're obviously learning how to be coaches and building a coaching business, but at the same time, making sure that our social media is growing and magnetic and all the things. And I will let you know too, before I launch the branding of the social media program and badass mode and the manifestation program, if you DM me or my team, you will get a pre-sale offer that's not on my link page because the moment that I get it branded and the branding's launched and I got to start marketing and teams involved, then the price goes up. So if you want to jump in and you know you want to work on your social media skills, your attraction marketing, your sales skills, reach out. But otherwise, you will see me launch all the graphics. Um, Coach Academy is going to start October 6th. Social media is going to social media program is going to start October 9th. And then you will hear all the other things that are coming. But if you could do one offer, inner circle. And for those of you who are doing the draw of you and 50% off, like how amazing is that? And then we spend a whole year together. You're in all my coaching containers. We get to have mastermind calls. It's going to be freaking epic. I'm so excited. I have so much to share, but I need to give my voice a break because I definitely feel a little like something. It's coming. Yeah. Inner circle looks amazing. It's everything that I got. And it's, and like all my programs are live. You do get to keep the self-paced ones. Um, love you so much. Love you. Thank you, Bonnie, Angela, Marine, everybody, Lindsay, everybody who showed up today. You are amazing. Um, so I'm going to obviously load this up on YouTube. If you wanted anybody to listen. Yes, Patricia, thank you. Um, if you want people to listen to this right now, you'll have to add them into the group. Um, but there will be a YouTube link and you can go binge. So go back. You guys know, sometimes our brain can hear certain things, but there's a lot of golden nuggets there. And I love you again. I'm going to go now and have some water and enjoy my evening with Adam, but I love you. We got this. You are the leaders. We are going to rise together and like love on each other, support each other. Anytime you buy something, share it really like you have no idea what you're doing for a business by one share and you're, you're helping people tap into your network and magic happens. This is, I also believe spiritually when we help other people, this is where like the wealth code comes in, even by sharing their business, we are an energetic match for people sharing us. And I really do believe the universe just gives you amazing things. Every time you give value to the world and someone changes by something, whether it's a share or your comment or a testimonial or just any kind of value that you impact somebody, God, universe, source, spirit, you will be rewarded. You will be rewarded. Just trust that. This was absolutely amazing. I'm so freaking happy. I'm so happy. I will see you guys for day four and I will see you for the draw. It will all be in the event section by later today with all the times. 
And uh, yeah, keep a watch out for the branding for Coach Academy and social media. Um, okay, I'm done talking now because I could just go on and on and on. My voice is going to go. I love you so much. Have a beautiful weekend, guys. I will see you live 